ดีค่ะ Blind or partially sighted persons do have to face a host of challenges in their lives, starting from social acceptance to education to job employment. Marianne Diamond, president of the World Blind Union, which represents 285 million people worldwide, will share with us her perspective about the progress and shortfall of policies concerning the blind. Marianne, about how many people are blind or partially sighted in the world today? According to the World Health Organization in 2011, there's 285 million people in the world who are blind or have low vision. 39 million of them are totally blind. Mm -hmm. What's the demographics like? Are they old, young, men, women? Um, large numbers are older persons. 90% of them live in developing countries. 90%? Yes, close to 90% of all the people who are blind come from the poorest countries of the world. How come? A lot of reasons, I guess. One is general health, access to medical treatment and care. Um, and, and, and around 80% um, of the people who are blind in the world have conditions that are treatable or could have been prevented if you know, other factors were in place like good hygiene, access to medical care and so on. So that is really why there's a lot of numbers in the developing world. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest challenges for blind people to just um, do activities in their everyday lives? Uh, there's a lot of challenges and they vary a little bit depending on what part of the world you come from. In right. some countries, acceptance of a family member who is blind um, can be an issue in itself. Sometimes people are embarrassed mm -hmm. or feel that they've, they're sh ashamed mm -hmm. or they've done something wrong to have a person who's blind and sometimes therefore they don't go and get support and help to help that person become able to do things. Um, that's not the case in all countries, but it certainly is a factor in some. Some of the challenges faced generally uh, in the developing world, we know that less than 10% of children who are blind receive any form of education at all. Oh no! So we know there's around 6 million children in the developing country of school age, and around 4.5 million of them don't go to school um, at all. Employment, unemployment of blind people is a really big issue. Even in the most developed countries of the world, even like Australia, my own country, around 70% of blind persons have no formal work. Mm -hmm. um, irrespective of many laws and policies we have, right. access to education that they have had. Many are very qualified, but they don't seem to be able to get work. In the developing world, um, participation in the workforce is really around 90%, 90% of unemployment of blind persons. So mm -hmm. education, employment, and therefore, when you don't have an education, you don't have any means of income, right. you become a person living in poverty, and therefore you get caught up in this cycle, you know, being very poor, not mm -hmm. able to participate in your community, not able to uh, buy things, and so therefore you get caught up in, in, in the cycle of poverty. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about discrimination. Does it still exist, and how badly is it? I think you know this discrimination can be divided into um, direct discrimination and indirect discrimination. Yet sometimes people are discriminated against not because the person intends to discriminate against. Sometimes it's ignorance; mm -hmm. they don't know what to do, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. to uh, support, mm -hmm. or even how to talk to someone with a disability or who's blind. Um, sometimes there is direct discrimination, and I think if I look at employment, what we find is a lot of the reason that people who are blind are unemployed is employers have low expectations or their attitudes towards people who are blind is that they can't do much. Right. So therefore, that's indirect discrimination. They don't mean to discriminate, they just don't think they can do the job mm -hmm. or that it's too hard to have someone who's blind employed in their company. So I think discrimination does still exist despite in many countries, mm -hmm. including Thailand, mm -hmm. there is laws in the country to um, uh, about discrimination. You know, and so um, in my country alone, I know, you know, if you're being discriminated against on the basis of, um, in, you know, access to education, employment, goods and services and so on, you can go to the Human Rights Commission and make a complaint. But we know many people don't complain. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there is laws. It still exists in varying ways. And the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, adopted in 2000 and seven by the United Nations, signed by many countries, Thailand being one of the first, mm -hmm. 
is another tool that we can use to change attitude and um, address discrimination. And that will be really helpful to many countries who don't have discrimination laws. They can use the convention um, as their law, basically. So I think we have a lot of work to do to change the situation of discrimination. However, we have made some progress and the convention is a really important tool. Just now you talk about how employers might have certain perceptions about employing blind people. Mm -hmm. Are these perceptions true though, that it is hard to employ blind people, they cannot do much, etc.? I think they're not true, but I think that employers or people believe they are. And remember, employers are just people in the community, you know, and I think often the reason why they, they have low expectations or doubt whether someone can have a job is because they don't understand blindness mm. and they don't they think it's all very difficult. They they believe that, you know, it will cost a lot of money for right. any additional equipment mm -hmm. or support a blind person might need, rather than having the conversation with the blind person to see what it is they do need. Because mm. not everyone who's blind needs the same thing. You know, we're not a homogenous group where right. everyone who's blind is the same, just like everyone, we're all individuals. Mm -hmm. But there are some common things. So I, I, I think um, for many blind people, particularly those with an education, with the right equipment, adaptations, there is no reason why many of us cannot do our jobs as well as anybody else. I use myself as an example, I am blind, uh, I use adaptive equipment like speech on my computer, but if you take away that speech on my computer, then I really can't do my job because I can't read the files or the documents, but with that speech, I'm as productive as anybody else in my office. Mm -hmm. Which type of um, jobs would you say best suited blind or partially sighted people? Um, I think in years gone by, there were particular fields of employment that blind people went into, you know, piano tuning, uh, working in factories, making things, answering telephones. But in today's um, world, I think people do a whole range of different things. You know, um, when people talk to me about what a blind person can do, I say, what, well, what do you want to do? You know, let's start with you telling me what you want to do. But, you know, there's no reason why um, blind people can't do uh, whatever they um, want to do with some reasonable accommodations or, you know, adaptations. So, you know, t I, I think in Thailand, I could be wrong, but I understand that Teaching is, is something blind people do, lecturing, university lecturers. Yes, we have a very famous professor who's yes. blind. Yes, I have, I have met him. So yes, that, that, that is, a, is a good profession. But I think I would be really advocating very strongly that we don't pigeonhole or, or make certain professions, professions for blind people, but rather uh, make reasonable accommodation in many different professions that suits the interests of the person, the skills of the person and the abilities of the person.